Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem from MIT. We have x squared plus y squared minus z squared minus 2xy. And we're going to go ahead and factor this expression. So this problem is from MIT entrance exam 1876. And let's see how we can factor this expression. Great. Now, we have x squared plus y squared minus z squared minus 2xy. When you look at an expression like this, the first thing you probably notice is the sum of two squares. And then z squared is being subtracted. So if you kind of look at it from a difference of two squares perspective, you're probably going to try factoring y squared minus z squared, right? So I'm going to talk about a couple of things that won't work. And then we'll talk about something that works, okay? So y squared minus z squared is the difference of two squares. We can go ahead and write it as y plus z multiplied by y minus z. That kind of leaves us with x squared and negative 2xy, which can be factored into x times x minus 2y. So the problem here is we were able to group it, like make two groups and factor each group, but we didn't get a common factor. That's the issue. So with factoring by grouping, you're supposed to get a common factor after the first factorization, okay? In this case, we're not getting that. So we need to try something different. And what could that be? Well, this problem isn't way too hard, but, you know, entrance exams in 1876 or around that time, they were actually fairly easy because there were very few people who were taking this test. Anyways, so here's what we can do. Instead of making a group with two terms or groups of two groups of two, we can actually make uneven groups. Because one of the things that you should definitely pay attention to here is x squared, y squared, and 2xy go together. Let's put it together. We're going to get x squared plus y squared minus 2xy. And then from this, we're going to subtract z squared. That's the leftover. Now, why did we put these three together? Because this basically makes up a nice expression, which we call a perfect square trinomial, or you can call it the square of a binomial. In other words, this can be written as x minus y quantity squared with the minus sign being in front of 2xy. If you have a plus sign, then we're going to have x plus y to the second power, and notice that this always has to be a plus sign. Make sense? Minus z squared, and this is what we were trying to get. What is this called? Difference of two squares, right? And difference of two squares can actually be factored very easily. So we can do the following. Remember, a squared minus b squared can be written as a plus b multiplied by a minus b. And what is this called? difference of two squares. So we can apply the same formula here. If we do that, this is going to be our a, and I guess we could go with a squared minus z squared, which is a plus z multiplied by a minus z. So in other words, x minus y squared minus z squared can be written as x minus y plus z multiplied by x plus, oops, x minus y minus c. And that will be our expression factored in the simplest form. Now, could we have arrived at the same solution in a different way? Like, we could we just break everything down, right? Obviously, let's go ahead and take a look at it from another angle, which might, we might probably call the second method. Okay, so the original problem was x squared plus y squared minus z squared minus 2xy. And again, this problem is from MIT entrance exam 1876. Things were very different back then, right? Cool. You wish this was a problem on any entrance exam. Possibly SAT maybe, because SAT isn't too hard either. Anyways, one of the things that I could probably do is, you know, uh, break down the negative 2xy. So I can kind of write it as x squared plus y squared minus z squared minus xy minus xy. 
So here's one of the problems here we have here. We have x squared, y squared, z squared. So that kind of looks like, I would say, x plus y plus z squared, except we are supposed to have the sum of squares. And now we're going to get 2xy, 2xz, and then 2yz. We're not having the twos, but that's okay. We're going to be looking for a pattern, something that looks like this. All right? Especially if you keep the solution in mind, in perspective, then this will probably be a little easier. So this is what I'm talking about. Could we have arrived at this just by considering what we get when we distribute? From here, we get x squared minus xy minus xz. I do have x squared and minus xy, but I don't have xz. But notice that that xz is actually canceled out by positive x. Make sense? So we have a negative xc and a positive xz. And then when it comes to y, because we got a negative xy from here, right, from the first two terms, or from the first and the second terms, and then we should be getting another negative xy. So how is that going to work in our expression? We do have 2xy exactly. That's how it works. So we're, we're getting both of these. That's good. What else? We are getting xz and minus xz, as I told you before. And then we're also getting something like a y squared, which is negative y times negative y. And then we're getting a positive yz. Again, that's, gonna, uh, that's not in there, but uh, it's going to cancel out. Because notice that we have a positive yz and a negative yz. Does that make sense? So in other words, if I go ahead and distribute the whole thing, I get x squared minus xy minus xz minus xy plus y squared plus yz plus xz plus yz minus z squared. So let's see what we have in this expression. We have the x squared. We have the minus xy minus xy, which is minus 2xy. We have the y squared and we have the minus z squared. The only terms that we don't have are these two and these two terms. And they're opposites, so they cancel out. So you could basically approach this problem as follows. You could just add xz and then subtract xz. And then you could just add, you could just add yz and then subtract yz. And then you would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine terms, which is three times three. So then you could try to factor it like this. And of course, in order to be able to get x squared, y squared, z squared, x needs to be, we have to have x on both. To get y squared, we have to have y on both. And then of course, with the z, you have to have a plus z and a minus z. So that kind of makes sense, but you also have to make sure that you get everything else. And of course, that's gonna bring us back to the same idea, obviously, once you know a solution, finding alternative methods would be a lot easier. All right. So basically, let's go ahead and clean it up because this will be our final answer. Let's write it in a nicer way. And this will basically be our expression factored in the simplest form. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.